sandpaper, peaches, porch, roofing tarp. <laughs> Hey. Mm. Hey, man. Hey. <laughs> you like my mask? It's pretty hot. Am I a fuck? Forgot- hmm? So go ahead. No, I was going to say, you-, you just forget. Yeah. And you see someone in a mask and you're like, oh, oh yeah, yeah, I remember that. <laughs> I remember those years. You mm-hmm. guys look great. Wonderful years of my life. Uh, Thanks, Zach. Am I a COVID magnet? Like, what the fuck is, I think I've gotten all three. I've got this the third time. 3.0? 3. 3. COVID 3.0. Yeah, I'm fucking batting a thousand. Uh, How is your heart still functioning? Well, because it's, I mean, ever since the first time, that was the only time. Then ever since then, the heart's been fine. Hmm. Um, I mean, besides the AFib thing, but <laughs> yeah, since that, uh, yeah, this time with COVID, it was very fast. I still, I mean, I still have it right now. I still feel like shit, but not nearly like I did. And then you are sick. Yeah. How are you, man? Sucks. <laughs> and I don't. I tested negative for COVID, so I don't yeah. know what the hell it is. I don't know. But we, we, were, we spent a lot of time yeah, close making quarters. Out. What'd you just say, Zach? Recently. Making out. You saw that video? I saw it. Oh, yeah. <clears throat> it was on our socials. Yeah. Ooh. Our only. The only go, fans. Go like and subscribe. Uh, uh, subscribe. Hit that bell button. Hit, smash that button. <laughs> smash that like button. Blah, 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 blah. Uh, if you don't know what we're talking about, you don't have kids because you don't have to watch all the ridiculous <laughs> YouTube YouTubers out there. That's all we do. Hey, smash that like button. Mm-hmm. Um, anyway, so we're sick. We'll get into more of that a little bit later. But uh, if I sound a little muffled, it's because I'm wearing a mask. Because somehow we didn't get the same sickness. Uh, thanks to everyone who subscribes to us on Patreon. You can find a link in the episode description. Of course, you can send stuff in to heyguys at canyoudon'tpodcast.com. We got a new segment today. Mm. We teased it last week, and this week we're doing it. Yay! Uncle Zachy Lappy. Lap time with Uncle Zach. Zachy Lappy. It's all like prepped that. and ready. Mm, well, Zachy Lappy. He's already on the couch over there, like patting his <laughs> leg. Come on over. He's warming it up. Yeah, he's. He has like a, a heating blanket on it. Mm-hmm. He doesn't want to, you know, shock you. Yeah, you don't want to sit down on a cold knee. <laughs> no, no one wants that. It's nonsense. We have a quick congratulations to get in. It's coming in from our son, Trevor. It says, what's up, my fuckers? Fucking Trevor, dude. Is that Trevor, dude? Or whatever. Is that, did he name his kid Colin? Or, uh, Should we read it in that voice? Yeah. Oh, what's up, my fuckers? Oh, yeah, dude. Thought, huh? Thought I would share this fresh gosling that has been added to the gaggle. Reno Nicholas has already been, oh, he's already heard his first can you don't because mom trusted me to drive him home <laughs> from the hospital since we took separate cars there. Dude, it's sick. Love the show, as do you guys on my crew. You guys had strong, oh, one guy had strong opinions on living in a strip club, and I advised him to contact you. Fuck yeah, Trev. I don't understand that. What? It was from a, a previous show. No, we I get a, that. Oh. What? One guy had strong opinions on living the strip, but I advise him to contact you. Yeah. So to reach out to us and share his opinions. Oh, on, there you go. Another guy. Yes. Got it. Yes, sir. Not I thought he meant the guy that he that already did contact us. Or his kid. Yeah. <laughs> he's like, get on the phone. Put he free. was born in a strip club. Mm-hmm. He's, yeah, he is. A, he's in on a strip stage. club right now. If you're watching on YouTube, you've got a picture of a little new. Oh, um, congratulations, you guys. He's yeah. already smiling. Look at that. <laughs> he's already just... He's probably listening to the show right now. Yeah, cracking mm. him up. That's awesome. Remember he, the... He what? already owes $240,000, too. <laughs> yeah. Yep. That'll already be for, in debt. That'll be forgiven. <laughs> yeah, they, on the way out, they give your baby a credit card. Mm. <laughs> Get some good old-fashioned American debt. Here, use this on some diapers. Mm. They sneak it into the swaddle. <laughs> slide it in there. American Express. <laughs> Where it's everywhere you want to be, wherever you want to be, is that even in the hospital. The you're born, yeah, something like that. Um, but yeah, so we're, we're sick. <clears throat> so if you hear us coughing, right on cue, that's why we're both sick. I was we're trying being, to hold it in, but we're being safe. Uh, Zach is not sick, but I will, I will be soon. Uh, we end every single show with a three way kiss, so it's only a matter of time. It's gonna happen. So it's fun for all of his shows. <laughs> yeah, it is. Sick I might have, a, might have a week or two off coming up. Ooh. All right, let's uh, let's get the show rolling. Mm-hmm. Ready? Dot okay. Mo. Zach! Hey, shut up. Start the show already. Uh, we got a dirty one this week. Yeah, because they're not all... Yeah, I guess they're not all dirty. Man, we've been pretty clean. Yeah, we have. We've been pretty clean. This one, I'm, uh, I'm heading over to instagram 
the Instagrams. Oh man. So I'm going to have to try and time this the best I can because it won't. Oh, it'll pause. Hold on. But then I can't fucking rewind it. Hold on. So it's just an Instagram video. Got to pause it. Sorry, guys. I thought I'd be able to, I thought I had the controls on it when I first started. Okay. So they're just going to listen to the audio of this guy setting up mm. uh, what our, what our would you rather is going to be for this week. Cause it's quite, quite nice. Right? I haven't heard it. I know. Here we go. You get fucked by a man Jeez. twice a week for six months. You don't know when he's coming. You have to live your normal life. You could be with your mom. And when he shows up, he will put you on your back and he will fuck the shit <laughs> out of you. It's insane pounding, but it's only five minutes and he will dirty talk you. He'll kiss you on your neck. He'll choke you a little bit and he will come in your ass and you have to clean it up yourself. He will leave. You can't do anything to him. He's like a mystic man who just shows up to fuck you. And your friends and family know about it because you have to live your normal life for six months or a hundred miles on a bike. But instead of a seat, it's a sandpaper covered nine inch girthy dildo. And basically this, and you have to sit all the way down on it. And the speed of the dildo going up and down is based on the speed of the bike. And the brakes are ripped out and it's a hundred miles of hilly <laughs> oh terrain. God. But when you're going downhill and that, that speed is going crazy, it is going ultra max speed in your ass and it's covered in sandpaper. Uh, which would you rather do? Follow for more tips. <laughs> uh, which would you rather do? Uh, which would you rather do? How's he doing? Miles? I wonder as a guy. <laughs> how's he what? How's he doing as a guy? That, that, just, uh, that fella? Yeah, that fella's... No idea. Right. No idea. But, 100 uh, miles? 100 miles, miles, yeah. Or for a... What was the first part? How six long? months. Six months. Six months. He would show up and fuck you. I don't... Fuck it. I forget how many times it Was it once a day? Tw or twice, twice a, a day. week. Twice a week. Right. That's it. Okay. So twice a week <clears throat> with the randomly getting fucked. Six months. Yeah. That or the, and I've seen videos of the, the bike situation. Have you seen those? Like, um, where the bike seat goes up and down, depending on how fast you're pedaling. Like yeah. people have invented that. Mac had one of those on Sunny. Oh, he did. Yeah. Um, cause there are videos of, I've seen of like girls riding around just in public because they can wear like a long skirt. What? And it's just humping them through the seat. As oh, they, I haven't as seen they, that. As they pedal around. Yeah. So they're just getting fisted by a bike while they're... Mm -hmm. Not right. fisted, but yeah. Is it a going in? Yeah, but it's just a sex toy. It's not like a fist. Well, I know, <laughs> but essentially... Can you imagine? <laughs> it's making popping noises as you... What is that sound? Boom, 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 boom. <laughs> uh, but yeah, a dildo. And, uh, yeah, you just pedal and it goes in and out and they just are riding around streets. So I've ridden, I've done many, many times back when I was riding a lot, like I, I there were days I'd just go do 50 miles, like mm -hmm. round trip, 50 miles. And that's a, that's a decent ride. But so essentially that would be two days, but for that few hours each day, you'd be yeah, sand, raw as fuck. Sandpaper is the problem here. Like if it was even not even sandpaper. <laughs> yeah, that part's it, sadistic. Yeah, that part's that's the one that goes, I don't know if that's even a thing. You wouldn't even have a an ass or a colon left. And you rip the brakes out. So you don't get to slow down, you're going down hills. So it'd be just going like Well, what I, I think what I would do at that point is I would I would just turn slowly down the <laughs> hill. Traver or tra tra traverse, traverse traverse down the hill so you would hit some switchbacks. <laughs> yeah. Just so slow. I'm trying to avoid cars. Mm -hmm. <laughs> ow, 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 God, that ow, would ow, take ow, forever ow. then if you did like that. Or Go you just get it over with. 100 miles. Or think about... Uh, it's man. here to Moses Lake. If, from yeah. Spokane to Moses Lake. And if it's if it's tied to the, like the, I don't know, the dildo mechanism, I'm assuming linked to the pedals, right? Or it's just rotation of tire speed. Because if it's the pedals, that's even funnier to me. If you have to climb a hill, you have to drop the gear way down. Oh. So you're barely moving, but you're pedaling your, <laughs> right, I mean, you're right, literally, right, right. literally pedaling your ass off. <laughs> <laughs> you can't get up out of the saddle and get after it. You gotta <laughs> stay in the saddle. Sit there and just, ah, it'd be awful. I, mean, I would assume it has to be with the, t the tire. It's going with the chain. <laughs> it's got to go with the chain. No, the chain wouldn't. That, no. It just has to go with the rotation of the tire. Yeah. <laughs> uh, like the speed of the bike equals faster the dildo, not the faster right. the pedaling. Um, I, could, may, could we try and balance this out a little bit? There's no way, and maybe I'm wrong here, that either one of us is going to have to pick this sandpaper dildo. Like it ha if it's just a dildo, I feel like there's more of a chance of one of us maybe picking that. Like how far up does it go? Nine inches. 
Like, like you're what, getting plowed. Which which at which point is it like you get a perforated colon? I don't I don't know. Like a horse fucking you and that dude and you know I brought this guy up so many times in the show. The that guy, guy that, that got a perforated colon and him claw. Mm-hmm. Like how I, I mean a horse's dick is what 12 15 inches. <laughs> And then going, think about like the, the fastness, mm. like a fucking piston, it's, like but faster. It's, it's like, <laughs> like it's a car piston when you're going down a hill. Wouldn't it go numb after a while? Yeah, yeah, but it's it's not even the the pain. It's the what it's doing to your insides. Yeah, like, would yeah. it even would you even be able to survive, or would it just completely blow you apart? I don't know. Maybe I'm now. I'm starting to think like. If the guy was very, if he said nice words to you, mm-hmm. you know, because he's talking to you, right? He's like, you're doing great. I mean, he's pounding you good, but if he's keeping, <laughs> if he's making you comfortable, <laughs> making he you come. He, he said he was talking dirty, though, I thought. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah maybe you're into that, though. <laughs> he's just super nice. Yeah, you like when this huge cock is. He has, uh, he shows up. He's very <clears throat> friendly. He has an advent calendar that you get to open up a piece of chocolate. <laughs> <laughs> You get to have one af- after it's over. <laughs> yeah. So you're like, eventually you're just getting trained to look forward to it. Yeah. It's like Pavlov's dog. You <laughs> smell chocolate and your, your butthole starts getting wet. Pavlov's yeah. booty pounding. Yeah. <laughs> he has like a foghorn. <laughs> like you're in a Walmart. <laughs> that reminds me of <laughs> shopping and you see your, <laughs> and you're like, Oh God. So anybody that's played <laughs> Assassin's Creed, that's what I was thinking. Whenever a mercenary is coming after you, it goes, Ooh, Oh, and you're is. like, oh fuck, a mercenary is coming after me. So you you get yourself all like mentally prepared to fight this guy. Mm-hmm. So that I'm now I'm thinking about that. Like <laughs> you're that you're like, oh fuck. Yeah. Mom, you might want to step out. Yeah. <laughs> but your family knows what it means. Yeah. So they hear it and they go, All right. And you're like, sorry. And you get like you travel around with a little bed, a blow up bed. <laughs> in your what backpack? if you're at Christmas? It was like your family's over for Christmas and you hear and you're like God shit damn it. I gotta go guys <laughs> in the middle of saying prayer Thanksgiving mm. what and are you I just thankful like, and for and he's out the at the distance out the window goes you're, you're, uh, you're all doing your thank you lord for our this bounty or whatever the hell mm. you say and then you look over and he's just standing in the window with a grin <laughs> on his face yeah he's like oh I'm thankful alright <laughs> with this little I'm, advent calendar I'm so- <laughs> <laughs> and so are you <laughs> How many more doors? <laughs> <laughs> there are 36 more doors. Now take your fucking pants off. Well, it makes sense around Christmas time then. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's all coming together. Like there, you have two advent counts, one for your kid mm-hmm. for the count down of Christmas. And then you, so you flip the thing and then you have yours too. What kind of dirty, what's a dirty thing that someone would say to you that you'd, you'd be like, yeah, make you shudder. <laughs> trying to think of one off the top of my head. What, do you, what, do you, what would he compliment you on? Like you're doing such a good job, you bitch. Well, <laughs> who's who's daddy's good boy? I mean, like I don't me. I mean, his your asshole would be getting loosened up. So if he's like, oh, you're so loose, <laughs> like that, your fault. Yeah, yeah. Well, quit I was putting your dick in it. I was nice and tight before you started bringing your calendar around. <laughs> Is it? Oh, you're getting so loose. Am I? Oh, I wonder why. <laughs> Or if it's because your fucking dick's in it. I love how he's like, he puts you on your back (laughs) yeah, and he just really goes for it. I do love the idea of him not even being me. He's really actually nice. Oh yeah. Like that's even creepier. He's not an asshole. No, well, he's just fucking him. You know what I mean? Hey. Oh yeah. And he's just like, you know, lays you down. He's got, he brings you gifts. He's like, Hey Joey. You're like, Hey Don. (laughs) Shows up with some flowers. (laughs) Yeah. And he's like, Sorry. Gotta do it. You're like, okay. And then the the video also said that, yeah, he comes in your ass and he makes you clean it up. Yeah. Which doesn't seem like a very nice guy thing to do. That's true. He's like, well, (laughs) all right. See ya. (laughs) You know the rules. Here, open your door. See you in a few days. Here, here's your chocolate. He's like, number 23. And it's a heart. (laughs) (laughs) I heart your butthole. (laughs) I heart your butthole. It's a special advent calendar made for like of buttholes. Yeah. Of like just sex things and Ooh, little this one's a chocolate dick. little compliments <laughs> that he has. That's Seems how like it's a good merch item. <laughs> yeah, I like your brown eye or something like that. Like something about a chocolate butthole. <laughs> yeah, Lucy Goosey. <laughs> <laughs> Lucy Goosey. Hong Kong shaped like a little Hong Kong goosey. Hong Kong, my favorite Lucy Goosey, <laughs> and it's just shaped like a goose. <laughs> You're like, oh, thanks, Don. I I, I suppose like I don't know. So kind of what I was going to say earlier was like. 
if he's a nice guy and he, he's treating you right and he's bringing you good gifts and chocolates, mm-hmm. you might start to look forward to it. <laughs> yeah. Because, you know, like, I'm not, a, you know, like, I'm not attracted to men, but I, I imagine, like, if he's doing a good job and it was like, like, I got an orgasm too. Mm-hmm. I mean, then it's like, well, this is a new kinky thing. That, Listen, I'm bi. First, yeah. I'm going to be bi for six months. Well, it's, it's, it's not that... Like it's not about being bi. It's like you just like you could be straight and still like stuff in your ass. Yeah, I get it. Um, you don't have to tell me. You about don't have it. to look at him. You don't have to look at him. <laughs> you just close your eyes and visualize. <laughs> what were you visualizing? I don't know. <laughs> Jared other... Leto. <laughs> <laughs> Ryan Reynolds. Yeah. <laughs> going back to our. It doesn't have to be Dawn. Yeah, going back to yeah. that was last week's episode. I think it's like, uh, yeah. Imagine uh, Jared Leto like up on stage. Mm-hmm. Where's picture of Marilyn Manson, all those rumors that were going around. Oh, yeah. I think just based off surviving it, I'm going to have to go with uh, the random guy shows up and fucks me twice a week for six months. Yeah. Because I'm just a little worried about what's going to happen to my asshole. It's sandpaper, it, a sandpaper aside, <clears throat> but especially yep. with sandpaper, there's no way. Well, what, what grade of sandpaper is it? I don't know. The because there's the rough <laughs> sandpaper, and then there's fine sandpaper that gets it nice and smooth. Oh, yeah. Like there, w- there's lots of grades of sand. He did, wasn't specific on the grade. What were you saying, Zach? Uh, I'm not doing the tour to fuck ass. I, <laughs> uh, I like that. I get it. Tour to fuck ass. Tour to fuck ass. <laughs> Even yeah. though we would see that as a die. shirt. The thing that sucks is like, no it would fear. It would be done. Uh, Yeah. You do it and you're like, oh god, that was awful, but it's it's 100, done. Hundred hours, then like a hundred fucking more hours of surgery to get your ass. Oh back no, together. more than a hundred hours. God, that would be so bad. Because like, it you know a couple hours to <sighs> go fifty miles, and that's going at a good click. <laughs> Think about this. I don't care the finest sandpaper ever. Take it and start rubbing it on wood. Okay, I guess do that for a hundred hours. Yeah, that wood is gonna be gone. I don't care what fucking wood it is. Hundred hours. It's going to be a divot at least. Your butt is gone. Well, it's rubbing, but now you like get a machine to go. Yeah, as fast as possible. And the heat, the friction. <laughs> yeah, your butt would just like it's probably going to light your ass on fire. Yeah, I'm, I'm getting fucked twice a week. Yeah, I'm getting fucked ass twice a week. Zach? Same. Oh yeah. Yeah. Fuck the f- tour to fuck ass. <laughs> <laughs> I get it. Be- just because you know, like, you know, obviously for that reason. Plus, you never know. Maybe, <laughs> maybe Don. Maybe Don like. He gives it to you nice, and you're like, okay. And it was, I mean, it's a it's a good one. It's, it's a, a custom nice advent surprise. calendar. It's fucking yeah. great, man. You um, get a little present. <laughs> yeah, I mean, this is a now it's a blessing. You know, like you know, girls are like, I like to be surprised every once in a while. You show up with some flowers, take mm-hmm. me on a date. Like, what's that feel like? I get it. Yeah, I want to see what that's like. Yeah, let me dab. Maybe we that. should be treated a little bit. <laughs> yeah, wined and dined. And wined and dined and sixty nine. <laughs> wined and dined and slammed in a Walmart. You that's know, right. <laughs> so it's amazing how sweet this turned. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> and have my asshole completely destroyed in a Walmart parking lot. Well, I mean, that's the whole thing. It's like I could, I could treat it like a, um, a burden, or mm-hmm. I could treat it like something that I get to do, <laughs> get to experience for right. six months. That's very stoic of you. Yeah, I love that. What but, if you came out of it just like completely changed, and you're like, I'm into, I'm into it. I'm into <laughs> things in my house now. You guys just remain best friends, pen pals. Yeah. <laughs> Um, fuck pals fuck pals fuck buddies alright let's move on to the what are you thinking about okay. for this week alright hey Zach do it hey hey what's up babe what are you thinking about uh, you know nothing actually you know what I'm thinking about a lot of shit what are you thinking about <sighs> alright sickness and health and health oh, we um so we're moving out of the studio that we're in currently. We've got what? What what day is it? We'll be out of here in a couple more weeks. We got like three more probably recording sessions here. And then we're into the new studio and we were ripping out a bunch of shit in the new studio um this past week. Spending yeah, a lot we of time. Yeah, we were. Spending a lot of time with each other. Uh ripping drywall out and getting ready to frame some shit in. And we've talked about it. I don't think it very much on the actual show, but on the bonus side, I know for sure. And I've always just been fas- fascinated with this type of stuff. But when you find like little secret holes and mm. caverns and shit when you're doing remodels, I just love that stuff so much. I mean, imagine people that find old tombs, like how much fun that must be when you find King Tut's tomb. Yeah. You know? Know? What? Yeah. It's, it's like basically what we did. Not even looking for it. Um, but in the in the basement that we're, we're ripping apart here... <clears throat> 
there was a a wall that had been closed off. It had uh, you know, dry what am I trying to drywall over it? And it was all put together and it was sealed off. And you could see a tiny bit that there was a door there. Like, what the fuck is this? Um, so you know, to rip the drywall off and we opened it up and it was King Tut's tomb. Mm. Uh, King Tut Jr. Mm. Yeah, he's in Spokane. Well, he was Wash. a kid. <laughs> well, Tutankhamen died at like well, yeah, nineteen or something. Well, I mean, they, but they also were reproducing at six. Yeah, so but he was nine when he became King King. Yeah, <laughs> imagine getting orders from a fucking nine year old. Reminds me of Game of Thrones with that asshole kid. Yeah, what was his name? Jo- Jeffrey J- Joffrey. Joffrey. Yeah. Even worse. Oh. <laughs> Sorry, was, King Jeffrey. It's there, Joffrey. There was there was nothing more satisfying than <laughs> then, when that kid died. Yeah. Uh, spoiler alert, Zach. Sorry. It's fine. Okay. It's fine. It's only been fifteen years. Mm-hmm. Just waiting until it's not cool anymore. <clears throat> yes, that's that's the spirit. Like you're just getting into DVDs now. Yep. I. Uh, <laughs> so wait we, till you see his blu-rays <laughs> he's it's on, gonna he, change everything because you, you guys heard of this it's, he brings a bunch of laser discs <laughs> for us to check out i'm not <laughs> getting rid of my vhs tapes <laughs> no please don't hold on to those it'll, it'll come back around right of course something i uh, but we ripped the drywall off and there was a door there and we opened up the door and it wasn't that cool no but um we found some peaches <laughs> Peaches that were probably, it was a jarring room. Yeah. And we were pretty jarred. Oh, hey I mean, just by my initial thought of them was that they've probably been there for at least 50 years. They was, it started, did you, because uh, I actually gagged when I started playing with the jar a little bit. Because I know that you, that you gagged, but I don't know if you were just fucking around. But no, it wasn't like a, uh, oh, uh, like no. a. Like just the consistency of <clears throat> spinning it and all the chunks moving around. It looked like, like when someone when you take a brain out and put it in a jar and kind of keep it. Yeah. But like that times, you know, gross. <laughs> yeah. It was pretty nasty, but I was cheering for you guys to open it. I uh, yeah, we well, never we, we never did. We open were gonna it. try, but it's they're they're air sealed tight. Um and so we didn't wanna we didn't have it we couldn't get it open. We didn't have some weird bacteria in it, so it's probably best you didn't eat with <laughs> yeah. all the shit going on, you know? Yeah. <laughs> that's Everything gets linked back to fucking Joe Dark and Brian ripping peaches open in a basement. Maybe that's why we're sick. Si- <coughs> oh, God. <laughs> As I'm saying sick, yeah. it cough. Um, maybe, maybe that's what happened, just the presence of it. Of the peaches. It was like a, it's like a relic <laughs> that you touched, and now it's cursed. Mm-hmm. The presence Indiana, of peaches. Indiana Jones and yeah. the peaches of doom. <laughs> <laughs> in, the, in the jarred peaches of doom. <laughs> I mean, the stuff that they ate on Temple of Doom mm-hmm. reminds me when they're eating the monkey brains. Yeah. And there was, mean, a, there was enough cobwebs in that room to... That was the worst part about going in there at first. You're like, oh, what's in here? And you just put your forehead an inch past the threshold. And it was just... It was like Spider-Man shot you in the face a little cum shot from spider-man i wanted so bad to take like a little lighter and just go and just have him go <laughs> that would have been some indiana jones shit well i did that assassin's tor- creed I, I like doing that and take torch. a torch into a cave <laughs> set everything up um because it just goes poof and then it's done mm-hmm. i didn't know you could do that i'm gonna go home and do that oh yeah <laughs> you, <laughs> you can going, what you're gonna do is go home and set your house on fire on accident mm. <laughs> don't don't take fired spider stuff advice from brian you know what'd be funny <laughs> is if someone did that with their halloween Decorate the oh, cobwebs. Yeah. Uh-huh. Check this out. You know what I always thought was, <laughs> this is getting off topic, but I always thought this this was really funny, that we tear down cobwebs and then put oh, fake yeah. ones up for display. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I love what picturing. What the fuck? The, yeah. Spiders are just like, what in yeah. the hell? What the hell, dude? I like, that. I worked my ass off. Literally. Literally. <laughs> I did this for you. Yeah. I'm, this is to my, celebrate. I'm just trying to, I, I can't, I don't, I don't have, my hands aren't big enough for money. Mm-hmm. I can't, no one will give me a job. I tried. So I'm doing this to pay my part of the rent. Mm-hmm. I was helping you decorate for Halloween. So your stupid Halloween. And you just rip it down. Well, when you think what, like, what's the equivalent of something that we do, like a human does. So like a spider works, I mean, works tirelessly to get that. And you walk through and just go, just rip it down. <laughs> like, is there, what's the equivalent of that for a human? Oh man! Something you work your ass off, and someone just goes, "No." <laughs> well, we've talked about it a little bit with uh, with yard sales and thrift stores and shit. We're like, like your grandma sewing a, a sweatshirt. Oh yeah, 
And she, who knows? She spent years. Yeah. And who knows how many models and revisions she went through to make this perfect. Specifically for something. Fitted. Like has your, has Joey. Mm-hmm. Joey across the front with my baby picture, like all mm-hmm. crocheted in. And then I, you know, if it's important to me. And then something happens and the box goes somewhere and Goodwill's even like, I'm not putting that in the fucking store. <laughs> like, <laughs> just throw it off into the dumpster. They're like, I'm not fucking doing this. Because <laughs> that happens with so many things. Like, it's important to you or you really like this plate set and you go to try to like give it to somebody and they're like, oh, thanks. And the second you leave, they throw it in the trash can. Yeah. Well, that's the, I mean, that's the thing with the garage sale. People show up and they look at your stuff and then they're like, thanks. Nah. And they walk away you're like, oh, this shit wasn't good enough for you. <laughs> <laughs> no, it wasn't good enough for you either. That's why you're giving it away. <laughs> but you're somehow kind of upset about yeah, it. You're still offended a little bit. <laughs> like, what the fuck, dude? Oh, what? Like, I mean, Al- I didn't like it, but <laughs> season one through three of Alf isn't good enough for you. <laughs> okay, okay, I'll keep it then. No, I didn't know this was a fucking <laughs> bougie neighborhood. <laughs> God. So above Alf. <laughs> <laughs> and one of my favorite things about when we were remodeling, <laughs> like we were doing, it was sledgehammers, crowbars. Like we were ripping shit out, mm-hmm. and we both wore sandals to the party. It was. What the fuck were we thinking? Well, and the thing is, is I brought, like, I did bring some shoes. I just grabbed my Vans uh-huh. and, like, slip ons, uh-huh. knowing that that's still not great. But I figured, <laughs> oh, Joe's going to be wearing his flip flops, so I wore mine. <laughs> but I show up and you were wearing, like, a nice black shirt in, like, khaki shorts. I'm like, what, what, is, he, what is he doing? Because I at least wore just a white, plain, <laughs> shitty shirt. I don't know, man. I just didn't have anything else with me. So I was like, yeah, this will this'll work. I'll wash it. And you were kicking the walls out and everything with, with flip flops. <laughs> and then we were we were like ripping stuff down and then it would fall and we'd like jump out of ninja jump mm-hmm. out of the way so it wouldn't slice our toes off. I got hit a couple it was times. Stupid. Yeah, I started bleeding a couple times. I still have a big oh, scrape yeah. across check, here. Check this out. I can't see it. Oh yeah. Nice. Well, it looks better wait. It looks better. <laughs> Now you can't even see it. I can see it. That remember when that nail yeah. got me? And you're like, "Oh, did you get it?" And I was like, "Oh, it wasn't too bad." I got home later that night and took got in the shower. It, it was, was like it had been bleeding. <laughs> there was dry blood around. We were on a mission. Yeah. Nothing was going to stop us. You could have hit me in the face with a sledgehammer. I'd be like, oh, "That's nothing. Mm-hmm. No problems Dude, here." I did some fucking damage with that sledgehammer. Yeah, it was it was a blast. Joe was he was using the saw and he was very precise. He almost killed himself, <laughs> almost cutting a power line. Oh yeah, but we got out of it. So I had to take the the sledgehammer to it, mm-hmm. and bash the shit out of it. Yeah, got it. Um, but we are, and then also you know just tying back to us being sick. Like that's so weird. We were just right next to each other the whole time, and then we both got sick. And then we just got sick with different things. I probably got some <laughs> so mold weird. sickness or something from the basement. And I got probably got COVID from the fucking peaches. Mm. Like the scientific, like the, we're blaming China. That's crown ground zero. <laughs> there are fi- we're blaming everybody else for where the fuck COVID came from, and it came from a basement of jarred peaches. Oh, what, <laughs> one oh I have it. So one thing, one thing we were talking about <laughs> when we were there was that. So they had to like they had to make this room. Mm-hmm. This was like their jarring dream. Going back to like destroying things that was someone's dream. Yeah. Like we opened that up and there was there were just shelves everywhere. And, and they were and nice built shelves. Prob- like they were hard to get out. Oh yeah. They yeah. were they were well built. They well and they're well they're building they're like, there's no way everyone's gonna anyone's gonna want to destroy this. Who would like, not appreciate a nice jarring room? <laughs> yeah, this is great. That's why <laughs> I, I, that's why I think that it, they're at least 50 years old. They're probably World War II era because the house was built in the, what, the teens or the 20s? Yeah. So it's probably a World War II era fucking jarring room. So those peaches have probably been in there for 80 since the <laughs> World War II. Fuck and they man. look like they could have been in there that long. Yeah, they were they were awful. But yeah, that is so funny uh, about remodeling shit. Like, just even thinking about the basement down here. Any room that you do, the kitchen in this house, when I remodeled all that, you know, because they remodeled it to get it to where it was. And they're like, this is awesome. This is the perfect kitchen. Mm. And we came in, it's like, this shit. This is so stupid. Or like putting carpet or laminate in, like, looks beautiful. And you Mm -hmm. come in, you're like, fuck this shit. (laughs) Well, (laughs) this shit's so dumb. I mean, like, whoa. Any house that you walk in, you're like, what were they thinking when they put (laughs) this, uh, this, uh, whatever the fucking walled sticky shit, the uh, what, wallpaper. Yeah, wallpaper. Yeah. Like were they like the fake wood wallpaper or something. Like what the fuck were they doing? And you just start. <laughs> you can't get it out of there fast enough. Or shag carpet. Shag carpet. Yeah. I it's mean, so specific to a time. Mm-hmm. Um. 
but yeah, like, it, and then you rip up the carpet and there's wood floor. You're like, there's been wood floor here the whole time. Mm-hmm. We've had carpet. Picture walking through a house, uh, like someone's selling their home, <laughs> but they're not having like an agent do it. They're doing it themselves and they're showing you the house and you walk in, you're like, here you go. Like, like you are trying to sell it. So it's like a yard sale. Like you're, <laughs> you have sentimental value to it. You walk in, you're like, hey, you, you know, you and your partner, like, oh, that's be great. We'll just knock that fucking wall out. <laughs> Cause who, why the fuck's that there? <laughs> this guy's like the people that remodeled <laughs> all of it. <laughs> you're like, oh my God, what were they thinking when they put this thing in and just kick a hole through the wall? Well, it'd be, it'd be kind of funny <laughs> if you, uh, if you didn't realize that the person wasn't a realtor and it was actually the person but yeah. you're treating it like it's the word exactly so you're just like oh god this was the word why would anybody <laughs> do this that'll be the first thing that goes <laughs> right and there, <laughs> those people were like we were so excited to put that in oh my this, this fucking kitchen is <laughs> like hideous and he, in his brain he's like it's beautiful <laughs> I did this with my bare hands. <laughs> I did this for my wife. Or it was like, my grandpa built this house with his bare hands. Mm-hmm. And someone's like, <laughs> pro- someone's grandpa probably built this piece of shit with <laughs> his bare <laughs> hands. He just walks up and grabs a piece of wood and rips it out of the cupboards. Do it's like, see? Our, the deck from our house, before we had it ripped down and put in a new one, it was a, like a DIY situation. Mm-hmm. But it was on the verge of like, this thing is going to collapse and kill people if we don't get rid of it. Mm-hmm. And we couldn't get it torn down fast enough, but it's that same thing. Like they built this humongous, actually, like at the time, it was probably this gorgeous <laughs> deck, and they did it themselves. But you could tell they did it themselves. Mm-hmm. And we had pros do it, and you could see the the difference. But the idea of like probably took him weeks, maybe months, to build this deck, mm-hmm. and then we just took a sledgehammer to it. <laughs> Sucks, <laughs> stupid. <laughs> tie it to the truck and yank it out, <laughs> which is funny you bring that up because uh, that's a perfect little segue over to Dick. You want to want to jump over there? Mm, yeah, let's okay. see what that is. Let's go, Zachy, take us. We'll fucking hold on. Oh no, what happened? Oh. Is it? Dumb? God damn it! <laughs> is it interesting? Is it cool? <laughs> what the fuck is going on out there? I wasn't ready for that. <laughs> God damn it. Did you think it was lap time or something? No. <laughs> you, just, you were just fucking off. I thought there was more to the segment. Oh. Was, well, it was pretty abrupt. Let's, I will. I will. Let's, let's I will. try it. Let's try it one more time. Do you have it queued up, Zach? Not anymore. Oh, shit. We already right. played it. I know. Well, All right. The, let me queue it up. The video version is just not going to play. Should we do it again? No, let's do, let's yeah. do it Zach one more time. Oh. <laughs> and now the, is it interesting? <laughs> what is happening? <laughs> then the things on there. Oh god. Okay. I always love that when you're like a presentation. You're at the presentation <laughs> and you see like media Windows Media Player or whatever. Yeah. It's like so unprofessional looking. <laughs> here's what I here's here's why you're paying me so much to do your accounting. And you look at it and it's like this clicker doesn't work. Mm-hmm. The fucking batteries are out on the laser point. And you're like, fuck, dude. Um so this first Sorry. No, don't worry about it. This first story is tying back into uh your porch deck situation. Mm. But this guy is a literal porch pirate. And the headline says, Man arrested for allegedly stealing neighbor's front porch over in Georgia. Just the whole fucking thing. And there's a there's a video to go along with the new story, so we're just gonna play that and listen. Alameda County man is accused of being a porch pirate. Literally. <laughs> Stealing Whoa. a porch from a neighbor's yard. Yeah, that's a new twist on an age-old crime. <laughs> Robin Swanger now faces a felony charge. Fox Five's Doug Evans has more on the story from Coweta County. Investigators say it happened on Clement Harris Road in Armco, and although the property has the appearance of being abandoned, they say the stuff on it was not <laughs> up for grabs. For one thing, there are no trespassing signs up. And investigators say Robin Swanger blew past them when he helped himself <laughs> to a this, wooden porch trespass. left on the property mm-hmm. when the home was taken away. So it's a full size eight by ten porch. Um, <laughs> it'd be what God. goes onto a house for entrance and exit of a house. Um, very well blinking. constructed. Very well constructed. Um, definitely used top of the line lumber on building that porch. Very expensive <laughs> porch. Deputies say at some point during their investigation, the porch reappeared on the property, <laughs> dumped upside down. Porch pirate is a term usually referring to a suspect accused of stealing packages from someone's doorstep. Investigators have dubbed Swanger a literal porch pirate for the theft, which has earned him a felony charge. Oh, yeah, some people may shrug their shoulders and say it's not a big deal, um, but <laughs> we take someone's that? property without their consent, and the value of this porch was $3,000. 
You kind of just can't go take stuff off people's property. Deputies say they had been on the lookout for Swanger for several shit, days when they yeah. were called to his house for a domestic disturbance. Suspect had gotten into an altercation with his wife and at the time had thrown rocks at the house doing damage and also um, tried to leave the scene walking before deputies arrived. <laughs> deputies say at the time of his arrest, God. they charged Robin Swanger with two counts of domestic violence, including battery, as well as felony theft for the stolen porch. Jesus. I'm Doug Evans. Fox 5 News in Coweta County. Mr. Swanger. <laughs> Dude. Ro- I like his name is Robin, too. Robin He's Swanger. He's Robin Porches. <laughs> yeah, he is. You got it with that one. <laughs> yeah. Uh, dude, what, what's going through your head? I mean, if you see this fella, if you're watching the video version, you look at him and you're like, oh, yeah, that's a guy that would steal a whole porch. Absolutely. But when you're driving home from work, it's a long day. I don't know, whatever the fuck you're doing. Maybe he works at the fish hatchery and he's driving home and he's go. he goes, Oh shit. I've been looking for a porch. <laughs> like, how do you, what's going through your brain when I like, is it, is it like someone stealing copper wire? Is that like the thing you're like, Oh, well, I can like that wood's going to be, I can use that wood for something. Maybe, maybe wood's still really expensive in Coweta County, <laughs> yeah. but he took it back. Yeah. Well, once he knew he was going to get like, <laughs> I picture him bringing it <clears throat> home and his wife's like, Robin, like what? But we've been over this. We've been over this. You can't just go take porches. Why not? No one's using it. <laughs> <laughs> That's how they got in their trailer, dude. <laughs> yeah. But he's driving. He's size. He's out there measuring it. He's like, yeah, that'll, that'll up. fit. That'll fit right in front of my house. <laughs> I love what? it. It would have been great if you would have went back and like and reinstalled it. <laughs> Even better. <laughs> they put it back exactly yeah. where it was. Oh man! Like, okay, did this actually just happen? But it's just upside down. It looked like it. Okay. <laughs> they the, the I feel like the uh the attorney there was was talking this deck up a little bit or this porch up a little that bit was, much. That was a little much when he's like it, yeah, top of the line wood. Top of the line wood, it's worth three grand. I'm like <laughs> What are you doing? Dude, it was uh, <laughs> <laughs> maybe top of the line back in nineteen forty two. It looked like something that there was a table when we moved in our house, it was just in the garage <laughs> and we just use it as like storage for stuff. We just set stuff on it. Mm-hmm. And we finally were like, why are we use? let's just get this out of here mm-hmm. and threw it out and put free on it. Like, that's what it looks like. Yeah. Like just so weathered and shit. Yeah. Uh, and he didn't, yeah, he didn't take it apart. He just took the whole thing. <laughs> what was he using? He had to have a flatbed or something, in my, right? In my brain, he didn't. In my, yeah. in my brain, he it's just on tied the top it, of his, <laughs> or he just tied a chain to it and just drug it back to his house. Just ripped it off the post and <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah, you just, he, he, Tied it up, ripped it out, and just kept driving. <laughs> just yeehawed it all the way home. Mm-hmm. <laughs> wee, 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 all the way home. It's a crime of opportunity. It it's a crime of passion. And I picture him trying to explain that one in jail, because, you know, it's a felony. It's like, hey, what are you in for, Robin? Well, throwing rocks at my house again. <laughs> okay, what else? Um, stole a porch. <laughs> what? <laughs> What? You're, I, not, you're not climbing to the top of any gangs. I sort of... <laughs> <laughs> For throwing rocks at your own house and then stealing a porch. Yeah, I... You're like, no, you're just dumb. Th- what was that whole thing again? He was throwing rocks at his house in a domestic dispute? Yeah, so he was fighting with his wife and throwing rocks at the house. And then and then went and stole it? No, it was just a different... I think a different time. Oh. They are probably fighting about the fucking porch he just drug home. Mm. I have no idea. But yeah, they were two two separate instances. Robin Porch. Robin Porches. Porches. You get it. All right, let's move on to our next set of dick. Okay. Okay. Go ahead, honey. Well, we're gonna go from Coweta County to the middle of the air. Oh, they're going to airplane land. <laughs> let's go to airplane land. Take yeah. me. It's it's a little bit higher than hot air balloon land. <laughs> yeah. But oh my god. Oh god. Let me. What did I just do? This is just a quick thing. My um. He. Uh. Who? Yeah. Who? Me. Hold on one oh, second. Yeah. I'm opening up my, huh, my huh. phone here. So my uncle, Michael, um, he sent me just a, a stack of articles today. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Put my mask up all the way. Uh, I said unlock my phone. Um, <laughs> he sent me a stack of articles and a text message. And it's all about hot air balloon accidents. <laughs> I just want to read the headlines, okay? Yeah. Um, these are all separate. Hot air balloon pilot safely lands on Vermont highway median <laughs> after mid-flight trouble with four passengers aboard. <laughs> Next one. Hot air balloon pilot was on coke and cannabis during <laughs> fatal power line crash. Ooh. Mexican hot air balloon pilot arrested after couple dies in crash. 
A daughter badly hurt after hot air balloon accident goes south and catches on fire in Mexico City. <laughs> <laughs> and these are all these all just kind of happen. Yeah, I, I mean, he's uh, he's hurt right now. Which get better soon. So he's just laying around looking up hot air balloon accidents. He wasn't hurt in a hot air balloon accident, was he? <laughs> no, that would have been crazy. I, I mean, I would have. He would have been on the show talking about his experiences. I feel like it's. Is it going to get big enough to where this becomes a thing that they start like regulating and outlawing? Objective <laughs> chug is outlining hot air balloon shit. Yeah, or, no or highly regulated. I'm not sure. Okay, sorry. Back to you. All right. <clears throat> Airline passenger reportedly mistakes her pepper spray for hand lotion. <laughs> forces emergency landing. Oh, my God. That is so funny. <laughs> According to social media posts, some passengers on the flight feared there was a catastrophic malfunction on the plane. Mm. Yeah, I, I would imagine. Yeah. An, uh, American Airlines flight from Miami to New York was forced to make an emergency landing after passenger gasped <laughs> the cabin with pepper spray. <laughs> According to one report, the woman claimed that she accidentally deployed the noxious chemical after mistaking it for hand lotion or sanitizer. <laughs> American fl- uh, flight diverted Jackson- to Jacksonville after the incident about five minutes. Okay. A Reddit user reportedly that their significant other was on board the flight said passengers near the back of the plane unexpectedly started coughing and complaining that they couldn't <laughs> see. Oh, man. It was unclear uh, what was causing the disturbance, and a flight attendant called anyone who knew what was going on to come forward. Who's doing this? <laughs> Why can't I see? <laughs> She's just walking through the thing. Oh God, it burns! Someone tell me what's going on. <laughs> a woman eventually admitted the woman eventually admitted to, u- admitted to using hairspray, but said it was only an accident. We're using the spray, but yeah, got yeah. It. Um, other commenters on the post who claimed they were on the bo- on board the plane said the pepper spray was no accident, and the family who deployed the spray had been aiming it for a different <laughs> family across the aisle. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, some users said they had no idea whether they're suddenly having trouble breathing and feared there was a catastrophic malfunction on the plane. What the fuck? Could you like if that's if that's what happened? Could you imagine like some getting pissed at someone and deploying air sp- pepper spray, uh, pepper on, spray on an airplane? Just and thinking that they think that it was not going to come back around to them. Like you're in a closed cabin which circulates the air. <laughs> like, There's no way fucked. you're. You just fucked over everybody. And let's and say yourselves. I mean, yes. And if it was an accident, I mean, that's way funnier than me than being like, you know what? Like, get your get your goddamn hand off the, or your arm off the armrest. Mm-hmm. And just spraying them, that everyone just ah. One last chance. One last chance. You know, I know what I'll do. But if you actually like, you're watching. You had your little iPad. You got everyone's got their little setup on an airplane, right? And you're all you're you're getting you're you're settled in, and you got your little iPad up there, and you're do to do, and you're. You're like, ooh, my hands are a little dry, and you mm-hmm. blindly reach in your por- perch while you're catching up on your or perch, porch, in your purse, uh, and you're, you know, and catch- you realize that your porch isn't there, and <laughs> you're like, oh, oh shit. where'd it go? You got this out on your porch, and your porch is gone, and fucking Robin's got it. <laughs> you just walk out your front door like a cartoon. You just fall straight <laughs> on your face. Robin! I uh, no, but you're you blindly reach in your purse, trying to catch up on your show, and you just think <laughs> you grabbed your fucking hand lotion you just go ah! like how bad that would burn how did they get it on the plane isn't that good the question. thing that you're not supposed to do is bring like lotion on an and, airplane yeah i'm guessing it got mixed I mean, you can bring lotion you can bring it's just like a certain size so it must oh, have maybe been, a little teeny pepper spray then. yeah like, like a keychain one mm-hmm. yeah ones that you know on the go yeah in, ca- <laughs> in case you get attacked mm-hmm on an airplane. Yeah, right, exactly. But that, the pain, but also, <laughs> it had to have been pretty funny to watch from a distance. Oh, yeah. If you were, I mean, the, the air is going to be circulating, eventually it's going to get you. But let's just say, you know, you're 30 rows away. First class. Yeah, and you're like, what the fuck the peasant's doing? Mm-hmm. <laughs> you move your little curtain. <laughs> Everyone's <laughs> like, oh, oh, oh no! You're sitting it burns. First, you're sitting in first class with your turkey club sandwich, <laughs> and everyone's screaming, and you're like, <laughs> "Shut up!" What was that all Keep about? it down. Keep it down. <laughs> slide, slide the curtain. <laughs> oh shit! No, no. Slide the little curtain back. You know, Rick. Hey, I got another beer. Can yeah. I get another, hey, can I get another beer, please? <laughs> They're pushing the cart up through the <laughs> the stuff. mist. All the, everyone's wearing a fucking gas mask, and you're just eating a turkey sandwich. <laughs> Sucks to be poor. 
sucks to be poor back there. Every time I walk on a plane, you, you, you go by the, the first class people, they're already on their laptops mm -hmm. and they're just like, I'm so busy that I I can't have a second to just sit. <laughs> to do like, I have to be making money. It's probably just to avoid eye contact with the peasants. Yeah. You know, like they, they think it's like a poor parade. Why will <laughs> they should put the door back a little bit. <sighs> so then when you walk in, the, the rich people get to go to the left and the poor people go to the right. <laughs> so you don't even have to walk by them. Yeah. You don't even have to bother the rich, the rich folk. Yeah. Yeah. I don't have to walk by them. <laughs> yeah, the like same, you breathe the same air. <laughs> but dude, it's such a funny concept. Ugh. Like you're walking by and it's just the parade of poor people. And you're like, Ugh. God, they can buy. Thank God we're not poor, honey. <laughs> Fucking talking shit and throwing stuff at you. Boo! Boo! And you as you walk by, <laughs> think about quit mooching. You're like, think God about something damn it. else, like uh, I, like anything, like a uh, the <coughs> first class on like a bus or something. Mm -hmm. You walk into a bus and the first couple rows are first class, mm -hmm. and just the idea of like a bus ride. <laughs> they're, all just, <laughs> they're all covering their mouths as you walk by. <laughs> yeah. The bus station. Is full of interesting people. Oh, sure. So it's imagine what like first class bus stuff looks like. That it's like the, the poor people on an airplane are first class on the bus. <laughs> yeah. So the people that are walking by them mm -hmm. are oh, oh god, man. the worst. <laughs> um, okay, you ready for the new segment? Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm excited for it. I'm ready. Let's just see how this see how this shit goes. Zach, cue yeah. yourself in, baby. Hey, little chitrons, why don't you come take a seat on Uncle Zachy's lap? Gather around, boys and girls. It's lap time with Uncle Zach. Sit on my lap, you little shits. Yay! <laughs> Sit on my lap, you little shits. We're here. We made it. It should be fun. It should be a lot of fun. Hi, I'm Zach. I'm looking forward to it. Hello. I, you do, whatever. You do it. Cue it up. What are we doing today? What are we covering? Well, I have a question for you first. Okay. So how long, how many people in your life do you have to have in it before you stop giving a fuck about anyone else? Oh, that's Th a big question. <laughs> So we're talking like family. Yep. And you just start expanding from family and into friends. Before then, you don't need anyone else around? Is that what you're asking? Before you just don't care about it, the people. Got it. Oh, so the, gr the group gets so big you don't care. Yep. Huh. Any guesses? One. One. <laughs> <laughs> and it's just numero uno. It's me, baby. That That's it. Fair. Five. No, I, yeah, I don't know. <clears throat> I'm going to go with like. Well, how many people do you think you know? First of all, oh, I, that I know, I know a lot of people. Oh, right. fuck me, tons, like thousands, tens of people. tens of thousands, tens, tens of, of people. people, tens of people. So I know like you. eleven people. I'm gonna go with like, I'm gonna go with like twenty five people. Twenty five. Do you 25. know? No, that I know that I would care. Like oh. if I, like I would truly, truly have they have an impact on me if they were no longer around me. Okay, that's I'm gonna, way, that's, I'm gonna guess that. What would you say, Brian? Well, that, I mean, maybe that's, ten. That's well. That's I have big family. Exactly. So, so it goes up. Yeah, impact of family is a big one. A big group of friends. So it, I don't know, fifty. Yeah, I'm gonna go twenty five ish. Okay, so Brian has a bigger heart than Joe. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's yeah. what we've learned. We've, here. we've yeah, we've established, established that. Yeah. Well, there is kind of an answer, according to Robin Dunbar, an anthropologist. He basically said that in the monkeys, in all the simian species, a bigger brain equals a bigger group size. And so most monkeys have a group of 50. Mm. And so, you know, both guys, guess. yeah. But we can like and understand 150 people. And that's called the monkey sphere. Okay. And so basically you have 150 people in your life that you can give a 3D character to. And the rest of the people, 7.999 billion people are just video game characters as far as you're concerned. <laughs> like NPCs. Yeah. And this kind of yeah. explains when you think about it why people act in random violent ways towards each other mm -hmm. is because you can't see anybody outside of that group as anything valuable beyond, you know, actual just NPC character type stuff. Yeah. That is, that, that is fascinating and it's 100% true. So it, look at it like this. Like yeah. My, you, my number is pretty small at the gate. I don't know what I was, <clears> I, I mean, there's definitely more people that I care about, but I, yeah, I, mean, I just don't have a very big family. Right, but there's a it's a bandwidth thing kind of thing. Yeah, absolutely. But an interesting way to look at it is like, you know, you care about your pets probably more than you care about most people on the earth. You mm -hmm. probably care about your car. The idea is like, say, you know, your pet dies or a bus full of kids across town dies, you're going to care about the pet. 
<laughs> now, yeah. if, the, if the bus crashes and those kids die in your town and then somebody in New York, a whole bunch of people die there, you're going to care about the bus more. Mm. And then if somebody dies in, in New York, a bunch of people, but then an earthquake happens in Pakistan or something and a million people die, you're, because it's closer to your circle, you can't empathize as well. And that explains the world in general. Like we don't cooperate. We cooperate pretty well. But we don't go full on because we don't care about each other. We don't see each other as yeah. full characters. Yeah. Well, it's it's interesting. As soon as you can put a face to the person, so like, you know, the, there's like, per, give you an example, athletes or professional wrestlers or something. Some guys that I grew up watching, um, you know, Macho Man, Roddy Roddy Piper, those guys, they end up dying at 60 and it's like, uh, that for that for that day for a couple of days I remember being like I actually feel pretty bummed I've never met him all that stuff but it was it, there's a connection to my own circle life or mm -hmm. so, yeah because it's like that was something that was important to me growing up even though I never met this person right within your 150 <clears throat> could be people you know even podcast hosts or you know mm -hmm. celebrities and stuff like that makes it interesting so how do we fix this that's the real question is how do people get beyond the monkey sphere which is a tribal instinct that is a hundred percent still a part of our lives and there's i mean what what could you possibly do the only thing that we could do is try and interact outside of our circles uh, try and care about things that we normally wouldn't try and understand things that make no sense to us that's really the only way that we get out of the monkey sphere but i mean we've been doing this for a long time and we have no idea we haven't got much better, I don't think. Yeah. Do you think the monkey sphere has gotten, like, I don't know, the gap, the monkey gap has gotten worse the, the more coverage that media gives it? It feels like it. Like, we are just bombarded with negative and bad news because we hear about everything all the time across the world. So now, on top of what we normally wouldn't care as much about, we really don't care about because you hear about it all the time, mm -hmm. and you just become completely jaded by disaster and negativity and what happens also when you have ten thousand followers on instagram i mean what does that mean you, that's nothing way, that's way beyond what you can do mm -hmm. and so i mean trying to respond to people all that stuff but it's just a bandwidth thing too yeah. you just can't do it so a lot of people think that they can and that makes you wonder about government when people say hey i care about you i'm i'm this kind of person it's like well but did you break out of the monkey sphere? Like mm -hmm. you're not working for your 150 friends. You're, you're working for 8 billion people or 300 million people. Mm -hmm. it's, feel, hard, it's hard to believe. I feel like it's kind of this connects back to societal thing though. Like tribal, when a tribe starts small, you, uh, you care for each other and everyone's pulling their weight. Right. And then once it starts expanding too much, you lose, you, you might be in the same tribe, but you don't have your, uh, you don't have contact with that person. So it just, it's the more that grows, the further you get away from everyone. And now we have 7 billion people. Mm -hmm. There's just no way. Like I don't, if someone dies in New York in a plane crash, I have a, like, there's no connection for me to go, Oh my God, I knew that person. But I do still feel like, Oh man, that sucks. Like that guy's got a family. He's got kids. I still feel for it, but it doesn't hit me as, as hard as, yeah, like, like, it, like even if it was like Joe's family that I've never met, it's still like, whoa, it's, yeah. that's really close to home. So it is true, but I just, I don't know if there's a way, like, I don't know if it's possible for someone to feel the same for every, the same that you would feel for your own. I don't think kind. it is possible. I think you're right. You Sounds know, exhausting. Like one death is a tragedy and a million deaths is a statistic, right? That mm -hmm. kind of speaks to that. You know, the ancients kind of thought about this too. They kind of saw this and that's kind of what the golden rule is is that idea treat people the way you want to be treated to yeah. to try and assume it but the last thing is to uh don't accept simple explanations if you want to get through the monkey sphere i think is what a lot of people have been saying uh life is people want to make it simple but it's not life is complicated and so that's your monkey sphere you have 150 people in your life if you add a new one that means you have to kick somebody out <laughs> so or you just have like an interchangeable uh group of monkeys yeah, <laughs> like, it's like these, like these fifty kind of come and go, and, and that's that's true too. Like people that were part or once part of your, like your monkey sphere, they 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 are in there and they're sometimes not in there anymore. It's weird, huh? Like they'll come and go. Well, yeah. you can sort of you can sort of like as, as bad as it doesn't. I don't mean this to sound bad, but you can kind of outgrow mm -hmm. certain people where you know like you were really close with this person, and then 
you know, you just, your, your lives are taking two different paths mm -hmm. and it's not like, I just don't like this person anymore. It's like, I don't have, I can't fit them into the, to my circle just because it, it doesn't, it doesn't work out. Well, they say you are the sum of, you know what, your five or 10 best friends. So yeah. if you're surrounded by people that are doing bad things, you know, then you're probably going to do that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But if you're surrounded by people that are, if you're constantly upgrading for people that are useful or helpful or good to you, or you you can be good to them. That seems like a better monkey's fear. Well, it does. I, I think honestly, it's like it's it's becoming apparent for me that was uh, the big thing is like I have these kids that I'm worried about. I have a I have a wife, so the people that I generally spend most of my time around are people who have kids yeah. and you know and uh, who have a family because you're you have things in common and you there's things you can talk about. Some people that are just they're kind of still doing the same thing. And it's like I don't. I don't have, <laughs> I can't relate. I don't want to go do that stuff anymore. Even not, not that it's bad. I just like, it's, I don't have room for it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And the older you get, it seems like the less you have capacity to care for a bigger group of people. Mm -hmm. I think if you move away though, too. Oh yeah. Like, like if you change, you, if, if I was still in Moses Lake, I would be much closer with my, a lot extended, more people. my extended family. Mm -hmm. We'd be, but now that I'm, I've moved away from that, I still care about that family, but it's not like we don't talk as much as we used to your life so. continued without ever talking like that's yeah. kind of like you without barely any interactions with this person your life still has gone the way that it has i think that kind of plays into how big the impact's going to have on <laughs> on uh on how you feel about it like going back to the airplane crash like if it was an airplane crash in new york but you fly and you travel all the time for work you're probably going to have a little more empathy because it also hits a lot more closer to home because you're always on airplanes but you're also gonna, yeah. You're. It's gonna be more of a selfish thing. Like, exactly. I don't want to die in a plane crash. Exactly. But that's like, you know, it, it just ties those emotions get closer to home the more you have any sort of familiarity with it. That's what. But that's why the people getting offended, I think, has a lot to do with it's their own personal view on the world, where they get offended by something, don't get offended by something else because it doesn't directly affect them or anybody in their life. Mm -hmm. So everyone is pretty self-centered in a way like you just can't avoid it stay open and listen and learn new things is pretty much what i just got from the monkey sphere yeah i'd say that's it <laughs> don't accept simple shit don't be like oh yeah i know that makes sense bye yeah just know <laughs> that you're in a bubble mm -hmm. and that your bubble is filled with the information that your bubble wants and not and nothing else if you meet someone outside your bubble like listen to them yes and, and they might be an idiot but you have to at least you have to at least listen you can learn from idiots yes, it's our can. show come on baby sure can <laughs> but that's also why like i don't i don't have a political affiliation or any sort of affiliation to and like i don't have like oh man don't come across the border into washington because i don't i don't want you here it's like who who gives a shit like right. uh it doesn't i try not to let people who have too specific of views affect me because i if you're only hearing the one side, you're not getting the, the, the full story. So as open-minded as you think you are, if you think you're so open-minded, you're probably pretty narrow-minded in other oh, yeah. facets. I you, agree. you can tell in this country that a lot of people have never listened to the other side's perspective at all. Oh, yeah. And that's yeah. how they talk. And they think they're right. Yeah. And that's how mainstream media talks. It's like they don't even know the arguments of the yeah. opponents, which is very unwise, and we're kind of dealing with that. So... Godspeed, little monkeys. Hey, thanks. That was that was a wonderful lap time. I enjoyed that, Uncle Zach. My pleasure. I had all a the great time with you on my lap. And all the listeners out there, do that do that thought experiment with yeah. you. Like put that circle and actually think about it. Mm -hmm. Cause I you know, as mad as I get at someone driving in the wrong lane on the freeway and screaming at him, I still I still have that in my brain, like they probably don't realize that they're <laughs> being in a fucking yeah. idiot. So then I feel bad for screaming at him. So like, I think everyone should have a little bit of that. Like you could get mad at someone, but then also go like, well, mm -hmm. it's probably because of this. And it's also the thought just relating to driving, um, which is a little, I mean, branch off of the monkey sphere a little bit, but is not every, if you're in a hurry and you get stuck behind somebody, like you have to remember, they're probably not in a hurry. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like yeah so maybe not, you should have left your house earlier <laughs> yeah, not everybody is is in a hurry so just because they're going slower than you going way fast doesn't mean that they're fucking idiots it means that they're mm. not in a hurry <laughs> and the people who have and the, honestly like we can, then we can get out of this the people that have um their views it's hard to 
it's just it's it's ignorance and not ignorance in a way that it's like bad it's like they're they're making decisions based on their worldview and if they never had a different worldview that's why they think that Mm -hmm. we they haven't had a chance to understand someone else's perspective so widen your circle and fill it with good monkeys i love it fuck yeah all right let's take a look at some good news for this week okay so you're telling me there's a chance Hooray, we aren't doomed. Yeah! Huh. Right, we have some good news, Brian? I am. So this is a uh, uh, this is a, a student, a young guy doing some good stuff. But after his classmates were bullied for having dirty clothes, this teen built a laundry room at his school. So high school senior Timmy Tomardell... Uh, he was a perfect example of the yep, monkeys. Yep, Jimmy Tomardell noticed last fall that some students at his school stopped coming to class after being bullied for showing up in their dirty clothes. The kids, Tomardell learned, were uh, wore <laughs> dirty clothes because their parents didn't have the money or the time to wash them at home. Now, Tromadell, the class president at Lacey Township High School in New Jersey, about 60 miles east of Philadelphia, came in with the idea. I thought bringing free laundry services would be beneficial. So that's exactly what he did. After reaching out to local appliance stores, Tom Riddell secured a washer and dryer donated by Anchor Appliance in nearby West Creek. And then it goes on to say that it went so well that other schools in the area are also going to start putting in facilities like in their schools so you can come and do laundry if you don't have the, the means to do it at home. And that's something that I think a lot of people take for granted is having a washing. Are you going to die? I'm just getting really hot. <laughs> okay. Keep going. You, keep going, baby. Uh, if you if you sweat too much, we'll just take your clothes down to the washing machine. We'll get you all taken care of. <laughs> a hot flash or something. <laughs> yeah. Um, so I, I remember that growing up too, like having kids in school that like you definitely <laughs> knew, you definitely knew which ones didn't have like a, a household that had all of the like I don't know, not necessities. But I guess amenities, uh, amenities, amenities, that's what I was trying to think of, that you have. And they would get bullied. And that's so fucked up. <laughs> like, making fun of their greasy hair or making fun of their shirts always being dirty. Uh, so, in my schools didn't have any washing machines. I mean, they did for the sporting stuff, but you couldn't just go there and wash your shit. Did you guys at the schools have that? No. Like an open washing machine? No, because no one... We were just getting into the uh, care about your... Yeah, like remember that all the things like people of different color, like that was just starting to they making commercials about having kids of different color or poor people, right? Like that wasn't a thing yet. <laughs> They're just starting when we were to, kids, yeah, starting to get it figured out. <laughs> yeah. uh, so I love the idea. That's awesome. That uh, I like. And <laughs> I'm, there's no way, and this is just coming from experience of of running for like student council positions growing up, <laughs> going through the school system. <laughs> There's no way that he led with that. He's like, I want, I'm going to put a washer and dryer in the school. And everyone's like, yeah. Like they'd be like 40 hour lunches and candy machines. Yeah. Like a pot machines and, and <laughs> yeah. candy machines and like vape machines. Right. We'll have candy on every corner of the school. And then uh, he fit, it's kind of like a real politician, right? Yeah. And then they do put all the good stuff in there. Mm-hmm. No, they put the good stuff out front. And then they sneak in a washing machine, <laughs> pigeonhole it in. Yeah, so it passes. Uh, but what's that? What's it? What's it called? Oh man, I forget when they sneak something in on a bill. Is it called pigeonhole? No, it's not pigeonhole. God damn it! Whatever. Fuck it. Pork. Pork. Uh, yeah. So that's it. Good job, buddy. I love giving kids the opportunity like that. Uh, here's something we weren't able to get into <laughs> last week. You ready to talk about it this week? Yeah. For something you found? <laughs> All right. Hit it, Zach. Wait, I found it? Yeah. The internet is pretty wild. Depending on your browsing habits, you can either experience something super cool or go to prison. Crazy, right? Let's check it out together as a couple. Hey, look what I found. Yes. That's awesome. I think this is actually something I could use right now. <laughs> okay. What is it? If you hate breathing and pollutants and don't mind being stared at, and your time might have come. The Dyson Zone headphones are finally available. The fucking what? They're headphones. Okay. That <laughs> that's you know headphones. Yeah. But then it's got a strap that goes around the front that purifies the air. <laughs> okay. Uh, so you can listen to music and breathe. <laughs> He's weird looking. Yeah. You kind of look like a like a 
or, or, or like a space age scorpion from Mortal Kombat. Like a sub zero. Mm. Get over here. Maybe yeah. that's the football helmets in the future. Yeah. It's just air purifiers on the front. <laughs> so it's got, I mean, it's got 50 hours of isolation or trans- uh, noise canceling. Yeah. So they're, they're great. Uh, oh, you can control this in the, the airflow speed through the uh, My Dyson app. You also know how much nitrogen dioxide is in the air. So this thing is like freaking detailed. <laughs> Testing everything around Tell, you? Yeah. It tells you all the, what's around you and... Heading back into another sick season. I mean, fuck having COVID right now and you being sick. I wonder if these, I wonder if it would work. If you, like, if you, I know it's just purify, purifying the air, but how well would it work if you were actually wearing this thing and there's a ton of sick people around you? Would it filter out everything and keep you from getting sick? Well, what I find funny about it is it's not just like, we're not, we're sticking, we're just talking about that. It's like, it's headphones too. So mm-hmm. it was like, yeah, I want to go to the store and, and have clean air, but I also want to listen to music and not hear anybody else talk. <laughs> I want to have... I don't want to breathe. This would be great for the airplane. <laughs> like, first person in first class. <laughs> I don't want to breathe the same air I don't as want to you, breathe. and I don't, I don't want to hear you. <laughs> I don't want to breathe in the same pepper spray you're breathing in. Why don't they have some sort of an eye thing so you can't see either? Like, I don't want to see anybody. <laughs> Well, yeah, just have a, the visor, have like Oculus. VR. Yeah, yeah Oculus VR goggles, headset. but then also with an air purifier. This is how you isolate yourself into your own <laughs> monkey sphere. I know, yeah. isn't it already coming? Yeah. Well, when, what, are those new, when are the new Apple goggles thing come out? You know what would be really <laughs> great? Yet? Is if, we, if you have a VR headset and you go into a restaurant in VR and you eat and then it's it's a thing that you can lick. It's like a snozberry, <laughs> oh, yeah. like that, you know, in Willy Wonka, but you lick it and it tastes like the food that you're mm. eating in the restaurant. So like you go into the, like to eat, I want to have some dessert and have a cheesecake. So you go into this restaurant and mm. you're sitting at this restaurant in VR land and you're licking all the food. They tried to do the smell of vision back in the day. They mm. would pump smells into a movie theater, but they couldn't get the smells out fast enough. So it just turned into a blob just taco of meat smell. You can't do more than one. I think that's the problem. Yeah. You got to have just one moment where it's like, smell that. Yay. But what about the Dyson headphones? What if that thing came across the front of your face and then just gave you your own tiny mm-hmm. scent? You know, Burger King's pushing for video games to do that. So well, that you can have awesome. it your way. Yeah. That's right. You, you rule at BK. BK. And it's also kind of weird that Dyson's is making headphones. Like, they're vacuums. <laughs> well, they're all about cleaning and yeah. So and like the air up. part with the headphone thing, it's like a you know like a company makes something that kind of makes sense. Mm. Like if Trojan made like a roofing tarp, <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. It's like it's I mean kind of makes sense. Yeah. I mean, it's Maybe keeping... they partnered with <laughs> Bose or Sony or something. <laughs> it's like it's a yeah. It's keeping things out. It's like waterproof. It almost you're like I don't know probably know what they're doing <laughs> like samsung makes some sunglasses you're like i mean you their tvs you watch and they gotta know something about eyeballs the perfect thing about that is yamaha like yeah. yamaha makes they make keyboards guitars <laughs> motorcycles, motorcycles <laughs> cars, race cars, race cars. Yeah, it's like holy shit you got your hand in everything <laughs> they're the like they're on the cutting edge of formula one sports cars and how to teach your kid how to play blah blah black sheep key bar yeah, yeah right like they, they know both they got them down to a science and everything uh, in between and everything in between yeah um anyway that's that's i mean i would fucking wear it they're, they're a thousand bucks so i'm not doing well, that we, but we wore masks for a couple of years like, yeah i'll wear this thing yeah but i didn't wear a thousand dollars in masks and I'd like to be able to hear the world. Like, I would like the other way around. Like, fuck headphones. Just give me a purifier that looks cool I can wear in front of my face. No, I'm, I'm saying, like, this is something that I would probably rock on an airplane. Mm-hmm. Just because you're getting clean air and you don't have to hear the airplane. You're getting fresh hits and fresh air. Like, if I was on the airplane, if I wasn't with my family or something, I was just riding solo. Mm-hmm. They should, I mean, why not <clears throat> put a little voice modulator in at that point? Hey, is Sarah, got anything you need for you? I'm all good. Look, it just has a Bane voice. I'm all. What does he sound like? Is it this? Oh, w- what about? Is it this right women now. talking dirty to you? Yeah. In the picture. I like fuck. that. That'd be fine, right? Does it kind of feel like we're all going to be wearing Star Wars masks in the future? That's Does it the, maybe explain like the cantina in Star Wars, where it's like everybody feels like they might be getting sick? Burp, That's why Boba burp, Fett's burp, wearing burp, a mask. Burp, burp. Yeah, absolutely. I think it, it's. I'm it, for that. Yeah, it has clean air. It has probably you know, all of the it makes your voice sound different. Augmented reality. <laughs> That you could put inside the visor. Yeah, it all makes sense. Just put a fucking helmet on. A Mandalorian helmet. 
Yeah, why not? This is the way. It's a All mask. Right. <laughs> That's true. All right, let's hear from some of the kids this week. Okay. Roll it! All right, let's hear what you guys think. Really? You want to talk to me? Wow, that's cool. Wow. Our first email coming in from our daughter, Casey, who writes, Oof. Well, hello there, daddies. God damn. First, what? Boing. Oh, <laughs> first before. I thought you were getting sick again, but you're just getting fucking hard. Mm. First before my story, I want to mention that I'm so ridiculously happy that Zach is back. Oh, the Zach attack. Zach's me too. Been following Joe since I was a dummy, realized it was Zach's voice on episode 50 and audibly squeaked with joyous excitement in my work cell. Uh, me too. Oh, man. Welcome, welcome, buddy, again. He's going to keep welcoming. Thank you. We keep welcoming you for the Five every single later. time. Mm-hmm. Happy to be here. Mm-hmm. Happy to be here. Uh, it caught me a funny look from my coworker, but worth it. She's used to me laughing randomly throughout the day, listening to you idiots anyway. That being said, I'm a little behind on episodes. You son of a... God... <laughs> oh my god but when you're talking about the woman who got peed on during her flight by a blackout drunk asshole remember that guy mm-hmm. i knew i had to share a similar experience with you all i ran into the bathroom at work to write this email immediately because like Brian, i'll forget if i don't get it off my chest right away yep back in high school i would frequently hang out with my usual circle of cross-faded friends on the weekends being teenagers whenever we could get booze we almost always overdid it never had to be so cold <laughs> Crossfade. yeah i <laughs> gotcha <laughs> <laughs> luckily nobody was a douche when they were drunk however one friend in particular had a nasty habit of waking up in the middle of the night after blacking out to go pee and almost always taking a piss in not the bathroom <laughs> Half asleep and still drunk, he's taking a piss in his pl- in plants, opened the fridge and peed in it, and even went outside off the porch in his hazy state. As long as the porch is there and the <laughs> yeah. plants are getting watered. As long, as long as Robin doesn't fucking take your porch in the middle of the night, That's you should right. have a place to pee. However, none were so miraculous as this. Four of us were passed out in my buddy's living room. I'm on the sofa, two guys on the floor, and one in the reclining chair. My mystery pisser friend was one of the guys on the floor, and in typical fashion, woke up during the night and had to take a leak. Out cold. <laughs> Never out to be so cool. <laughs> out cold on the couch, I was awoken by an outrageous shout from my friend in the recliner and a loud crash. Startled and alert now, I shot up as another friend flipped the lights on to see the <laughs> recliner tipped over and both friends are on the floor. I guess what happened was Mr. Pissy made it as far as the recliner before he leaned against the wall <coughs> and just started relieving himself on my recliner buddy. Just as my friend in the chair started to wake up and realize what was happening, Pissy had leaned over and hit the lever on the recliner as though he thought he was flushing the toilet. The footrest came up, sweeping his feet out from under him with such force that he was flung into the recliner with, the, uh, with our other friend, eventually knocking it over and both toppling them into the smelly, wet heap. Oh my god, it's like a fucking Will Ferrell scene. That's what I was visualizing, the yeah. uh, stepbrothers. Mm-hmm. Personally, I don't know if I've ever laughed that hard in my life up to that point. Luckily, we all had good senses of humor and weird shit happened to us a lot, so it just made a fantastic story for later. I don't know if that friend still has the same issue as we've all moved on with our lives. This was 15 plus years ago, but I'll never forget it. Thanks for reading. I have a lot of great stories of him to share uh, to share in time. Hope you get a chuckle, and if not, fuck you. It's hilarious. Your Bostonian daughter, Casey. P.S. Joe Daddy, if you're ever feeling down, hit me up with some Call of Duty. We'll have some laughs. Oh, man. I, had a, I have a friend. I have a friend that just pisses so much. He pisses all over the place. And I'm so upset that I, this is like on my, the first computer, it was a, before, before I went to college, I was gifted a computer by my aunt for my graduation. And unfortunately that hard drive crashed. And I, the, the videos that I wish I would have been able to pull off of that computer, oh, there's so many good ones. And my pisser friend, it's the fucking best. He would drink too much and he would piss everywhere. So this particular time, he had gotten up, we were, we were backpacking and I had a camera and he stood up and he's walking over to take a pee. And I was like, this isn't going to go well. So I just started filming him and he goes and he leans against the tree stump and he's peeing and he like, you can't see his dick, but like you see the back of his head and he's leaning against the tree and then he starts nodding off. And then he, he's the hand that's on the tree slips off 
and he spins <laughs> and all you see in the camera is his drunk face flip and then piss go <laughs> and just whip up like a fucking like a water <laughs> like a like a one of those toys your kids play in and he just goes <laughs> just whips across the fucking screen <laughs> and he just goes <clears throat> and he goes god damn it <laughs> and the camera goes down and he's just pissing straight up all over himself <laughs> laying in the bushes <laughs> And I don't have it. <laughs> it That's like, probably good. Now I can run for Congress. Oh, man. No, he's not running for Congress. No, definitely not. Okay. I love him. Too many but, skeletons. But that video is not the one that's keeping him from fucking running for Congress. <laughs> I'll tell you that much. Um, but God damn it. Lost that one. Lost that one. But so good. Uh, you look like you're feeling pretty shitty over there, buddy. I, I feel like I'm going to throw up. Okay. Well, let's. let's, so let's I know. I'm fucking feeling like shit, too. Um, let's just wrap up episode 63. <laughs> see if you can throw up and then we'll try to get some bonus shit <laughs> before we all die uh speaking of that bonus shit if you do support us on patreon uh you get to hear bonus content on the back side of every episode which at the time that we're recording this is it's 21 hours of additional content it's not just like some minutes on the back end uh there's 21 or probably more than that if you count the the couple the handful of bonus episodes we did before we started adding on to the back end of every show there's probably like 25 hours of extra shit in there so go check it out patreon.com slash can you don't podcast uncle zach it was a pleasure sitting on your lap today buddy it was a lot of fun having yeah, you. yeah monkey sphere man and you're in my monkey sphere in case you're you you're too. wondering you okay too. cool cool both of you guys are thanks dude um <laughs> brian is fucking dead we gotta get brian some, oh, some love uh scatcast love you buddy uh go check it out scatcast.com that's scat s-k-a-t c-a-s-t.com scatcast everything that zach does you can check it out uh you ready to wrap it up with a yeah. joke brian yes jesus all right let's zach, get out go. <sighs> Good God. Wrap it up already, huh? <laughs> you're going to really like this one. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you're in such a mood for funny jokes. I had a neck brace fitted years ago, and I've never looked back since. <laughs> gotcha? Yeah, that's All pretty right, funny. Cool. All right, well, let's yeah. just... All right, we'll wrap it up. Kids, we love you guys. Uh, we should be back to full health next week. Thanks for sticking with us. Uh, part of the gaggle. We'll keep going the best we can, huh? <laughs> Bye. <laughs> All right, bye. <laughs>